Well, this is the starter kit, H111A, the first troubleshooting trainer in a series of five troubleshooting trainers that we have developed. And these have been on the market since about 2000 and uh, have been teaching automotive truck and heavy duty technicians how to troubleshoot electrical circuits. And our experience has taught us that to learn how to troubleshoot, you have to do it. You can read about it. You can talk about it. You can watch somebody else do it. But you have to do it yourself to convince yourself that you can troubleshoot vehicle electrical circuits. And you can, in fact, as I'm going to show you with this trainer, it's really quite easy when you know how. So what you're going to get in the starter kit is a workbook. Uh, I think it's 71 pages. It has everything in it you're going to need. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the uh, main points, but in the workbook, when you read about it, you'll get a lot more detail so that you can uh, study this circuit and learn the troubleshooting principles without too much trouble. It comes with a power board and a lamp board, and you'll notice they just snap together, and you pinch it, and that connector holds the two circuit boards together, connects up a complete circuit, and you're ready to power up and begin troubleshooting and testing the circuit. Now this is a power supply that comes with the kit, and you'll notice the power supply uh, plugs in the wall, and the red and black lead connect to the red and black post. Notice that one of the wires is shorter than the other. Now the reason for that is the uh, fact that if this power pack is plugged in, it's powered up. It has no on-off switch. When you plug it in, it's live. So that means that these two wires are hot. If the two wires touch while the power pack is plugged in, it will blow the power pack. So you say, well, why didn't you put a fuse in one of the wires? And here's some basic electronics 101. If I put a fuse in this wire, a small fuse, the power pack will be destroyed before the fuse blows. So there's no point in using a fuse to protect it because it isn't fast enough. If you use a tiny fuse that would blow faster, then the circuit won't power up. So we had no choice. By making one wire shorter than the other, it's a reminder that they cannot touch. So what we require and uh, emphasize in the workbook, hook up the red and black post to the red, uh, the red and black wire to the red and black post first, then plug in the power pack. So let's do that. And I'm going to be doing this, taking a little bit more time with this first cir circuit board, <coughs> excuse me, uh, because this is your first exposure to it. With the other circuit boards, you'll have a lot of information already from this training video, so you won't need to have such detail. So I'm going to connect the wires, tie it down tighten it down, and then the black wire. And you might separate the wires just a little bit to make it a little bit easier. And then tie it down. Okay, now we've connected the red and black wire to the red and black post. Notice the power pack is not plugged in yet. I'm going to plug it in right now. And we are ready to begin troubleshooting. I'll put the book aside and I'll bring the meter into the picture so that you can see the readings as we take them and we'll cover several points of troubleshooting that, as I said before, 
is adequately, adequately covered in the workbook, but I want you to hear from me as I point some of these things out. So in the event that you have purchased one of these starter kits and you're ready to start using it, watching this little short video will help you get started a whole lot quicker. Okay, so now the circuit is powered up. It is not on. Notice the lamp is not lit. I'm going to turn the lamp on by adjusting the ignition switch toggle up. And you see the lamp comes on. Now you're going to say, well, that's a pretty simple circuit. Oh, well, yeah. Why don't we learn how to troubleshoot with a simple circuit? Why do we have to learn how to troubleshoot with a difficult circuit? That only makes learning the principles harder. So I teach troubleshooting the first time with a lamp circuit because it's easier to understand and you realize that as you learn troubleshooting you can troubleshoot a lamp circuit and a DC motor circuit and a relay circuit and a solenoid circuit. It's all done the same way. So if I can teach you the principles with a lamp circuit and you do it the same way on every other circuit as I'll show you in the other videos that we produce for each one of the circuit board trainers, you realize how simple troubleshooting is when you follow a simple procedure which we will illustrate for you uh, with these videos. Now just to give you an overview of the power board, the red and black posts are there to receive the red and black wire from the power pack. Now the black post, that is actually the negative terminal of the battery called minus bat and that's where you have B minus. B minus is 0, 0.00 volt and I'm going to ground my meter if my leads get untangled here, you ever had that happen, you know what I'm talking about. You think you got them untangled and then they seem out somehow tangled themselves up while you're talking about something else. Okay, so I'm untangled again. I'm going to ground my meter at the battery negative post. And I simulate that by using the black post on the circuit board. One of the most important things to learn about troubleshooting electrical circuits on a vehicle, and what I'm saying is, what I'm going to teach you here with the circuit board is exactly what you're going to do on the vehicle, the same way, and you'll find the problem. So you have to ground your meter on the vehicle at minus bat, the negative terminal of the battery, or in some cases, if the battery is unaccessible uh, because it's in a compartment somewhere on the vehicle you can't get to very easily you might have the option of also using the ground uh, of the generator which is the metal case of the generator but the point being you have to put 0, 0.00 volt on the black lead when you start measuring circuits so that you get an accurate reading of what you're going to have in the circuit. So I put the meter here on the 20 volt range and I'm going to measure first off the voltage between the red and the black post. And you see there I have a reading of 17.6 volts. Now that power pack is providing a DC voltage in the range of 17.6 volts which is obviously too high. So what you don't see is a regulator circuit on the bottom of the circuit board. Here you see a regulator transistor, some capacitors and resistors. And what they're doing is they are taking that 16, 17.6 uh, volts and breaking it down to a regulated, let's see, there we go. Now I'm going to measure not the black, uh, not the red post. I'm going to measure the plus bat terminal, which is a little loop pin. 
That is the B plus terminal, the positive post of the battery, that little loop pin. Forget about the red post. The only reason it's there is to receive the red wire. If I want to measure how much voltage is available to this circuit, I ground it battery negative and I measure at the red loop pin and I see this circuit is producing 13.65 volts. Okay, now, notice that we have two fuses. We have an ignition switch, a three position switch. The only time the ignition switch is closed is when it's toggled up. If I toggle to the center or down, the lamp is out, the load's not working. So I toggle up and the lamp comes on, the circuit is now working. Then we have two sides, uh, sorry, slide switches, S3 and S4. S3 is on the voltage side of the circuit, S4 is on the ground side of the circuit. And you're going to go through exercises in the workbook explaining this step by step. And the reason for these switches is it allows us to demonstrate how I can control that lamp, that load in the circuit, by switching voltage off and on. And in the workbook, it's going to have you measure the circuit and actually see the readings. And then uh, we have the switch S4 on the ground side. And if I turn it on and off, I can control the lamp. So what this shows you is anytime you have an electrical circuit, there's a load that the circuit is controlling. Well, you can control that load by switching voltage or switching ground. So we have both features built in so we can use this later on in some of the other circuit board trainers. Okay, so we measured our B plus and we have 13.64 and uh, the circuit is powered up, everything is working and I'm going to show you here that using a lamp while it may sound kind of basic to some of you uh, thinking, oh, I need something more advanced than that. Well, the point being, if I took that lamp bulb out and put a solenoid in it, or a DC motor, which I'll do later, or a relay, which I'll do with another circuit board, or hook up a wire harness, they all work the same way. You're going to follow the same troubleshooting procedure that we're going to be talking about here. Let me give you a little quick jump ahead to what I'm talking about. Here is a circuit. It's working. It's bright. As far as I can tell, it's operating correctly from a visual inspection. So what I want to do is test the circuit and see if that circuit is operating properly. The first thing I'm going to do is measure the voltage going to the lamp. And I call that pin 1. You'll see that as we uh, go through the different circuit boards, I use very much the same terminology to make it easy to adapt to the next circuit and see how it all fits together. So I measure pin 1, which is the voltage side of the circuit, and I see that the lamp is receiving 12.85 volts on the voltage side. And then I go to pin 2, which is the ground side, and I measure and I find on the ground side I have 0 0.03. Now I know from those two readings that this circuit is perfectly uh, is operating perfectly and everything is good. You ever wonder sometimes when troubleshooting a circuit and you're thinking well is it working as good as it should? How would you know? Do what I just did. I call this a Texas two-step. I measure pin 1, I have good B+, plus, which I know is going to be 12.85 uh, because my B plus is 13.64, so somehow 7 tenths of a volt is not getting to the lamp. Well, if you'll notice back up here on the circuit board, right below the red post, there is a diode and that feeds pin 1. Now notice what I have for readings. 
On the B plus terminal, I have 13.64. On TP1, I have 12.89. This diode is dropping 0 0.7 volts. So when I come down to uh, TP1, I have 12.89. When I get to pin 1 on the lamp, I've got 12.85. So you can see the voltage side of the circuit is not dropping any voltage of any uh, major amount and that's telling me the circuit is working correctly. On the ground side, when I check pin 2, I see my reading of 0 0.03 and I go back up here to the minus bat terminal and I'm blocking the meter and of course I have 0 0.00. So the, the point being the ground side is good. And so by checking the voltage to the load and the ground on the load and getting good readings, you know the circuit's doing everything it should do. If for any reason the lamp is not bright enough when it's got good voltage and good ground, it's probably something wrong with the lamp. Like perhaps they put the wrong lamp in the circuit and it has a different brilliance than what is specified. So as a point of reference, let me always mention things as I come to mind. When you replace a lamp in a circuit, make sure you're using the correct lamp. Because lamps can look alike, have the same socket, but be a different part number because they have a different filament and that can change the circuit's operation if, say for example, a monitor on the dash is lit up because it senses a brake light is out and you go to the brake light, it's working, but somebody put the wrong bulb in there and the control unit up in the dash thinks the bulb is bad because it doesn't see the correct resistance. So just always use the correct bulb and avoid some of those kind of problems that cause your hair to grow gray before you're old. Okay, so the question then is, what's that diode doing there? This diode is called a polarity sensing diode. Notice the painted band on one end of the diode that corresponds to the line in the diode symbol. And you'll see that in the book. Right now the diode is sitting on top of the diode symbol, so it's a little bit hard to see. But the illustration in the workbook makes it very clear. The purpose of that diode is to protect the circuit should somebody hook up the red and black wires backwards. In other words, if you connect jumper cables to a car with a dead battery and you do it backwards, reverse polarity, and you turn the key on, you could smoke the control units, every one of them would suddenly die because you've got the jumper cables backward. So what they do is they put these diodes inside the control units so that if jumper cables are ever reversed, the control unit will not turn on with the protection diode being present. It doesn't let current flow in the wrong direction as it would when you reverse polarity. That's explained in the workbook as well. Okay, so let's move down. We go to our fuse. Now these are metal cap fuses. We can use both ends of the fuse to measure. Uh, the hot side of the fuse is 12.89. Cold side of the fuse is 12.89. So the fuse is not dropping any voltage. And then we go down through the circuit and we're going to do some measurements. But the way we do it in the exercises is we have you start by tracing the voltage side at pin 1. Now this tells you you have 12.85 B plus getting to the load. And I'll go back up to TP13 and then I'll go through the connector to TP7, TP6, the other side of S3 is TP5 to this little 0 ohm resistor and then up to TP3 
and to TP2. The fuse, both sides, TP1. What I have just done is I have traced B plus through the circuit, and of course, the circuit has no problem. A little bit later, I'm going to put a problem in, and you'll see how this works when the problem shows up, how to find the problem. Okay, now I'm going to trace the ground side of the circuit. I'm going to do this with my right hand. Uh, pin 2, the ground side, 0 0.03, that's excellent. I go to TP14, 0 0.03. I go through the connector C700 to TP10, 0 0.02. So you can see I dropped about 10 millivolts in that connector, which is perfectly normal. You're never going to get the connector be perfect. They're always going to drop a tiny, tiny bit of voltage because they're two pieces of metal pressed together, and that will sometimes produce very small voltage drops. Then I go to TP11. And then TP12, the other side of S4, and then the G101. Think of G101 as your sheet metal ground. And then from G101, we go back up to G100. Think of G100 as your engine ground. Notice it's 0, 0.00. And at G101, I had 0, 0.0 a little bit there. See, it's kind of fluctuating. But it's, if you hold it tight, it's about 0 0.01 or 0. And then 0, 0.00 at G100. So that tells you the wire jumper between G101 and G100 is okay. And then G100 is your engine ground, but that connects through this cable to the negative post of the battery. So I just trace very quickly the voltage side and the ground side, the workbook will take you through this step by step explaining various principles along the way that will uh, make it plain and take you slowly. So if you're doing this at home, uh, the workbook hopefully will answer any question that comes to mind. Uh, so far, since uh, 2000, when this product was first introduced that was 17 years ago I don't think I had two or three calls from anybody saying I don't understand something because the book explains it as good as I could explain it on the written page but I'll tell you one thing that's tripped people up the most they start thinking this red post is a positive post of the battery and it's not and I remind them the little loop pin and they say oh Okay, thank you. That's, that's the one area where people have called me the most, like two or three times in 17 years. So this is very well documented for you to study. Let me demonstrate a couple of things for you. You know, we talk about the voltage side of the circuit. Let me take the leads, and we're going to measure the voltage drop of the voltage side of the circuit. It's in your workbook as well. Now the voltage side of the circuit is 0 0.79 volts. Remember this diode? It's dropping 7 tenths of a volt. Now the rest of the wire harness, the switches and connectors, are dropping a tiny amount of voltage. Actually, they're only dropping 0 0.04. But with the diode included, we see a drop of 0 0.79. This is all normal readings because the circuit is working correctly. Now I'm going to measure the voltage drop of the ground side. I'm going to measure from pin 2 back up to the negative post of the battery, and I see a total voltage drop on the ground side of 0 0.03. So that's another way to prove you don't have a problem on the voltage side and you don't have a problem on the ground side. Simple troubleshooting. You know, you could take this particular test of measuring the voltage drop of the voltage side, which I'm doing right now, and I'm getting a reading of 0 0.79. What would you see on a vehicle? I'd say on the average about 0 0.5.
because the diode would be inside the control unit. It wouldn't be between the leads of your meter. So I'm looking at here a reading of 0 0.79. If this were an actual vehicle, I might consider that reading to be a little bit high. So I would then go to all the connectors and I'd wiggle the connectors. I'd tap on the fuse box. I would do all kinds of things to move the circuit. Grab the wire harness and just move the harness and see if that reading changes. If that reading changes, you've got a faulty connection on the voltage side of the circuit. I can do this test and I, I don't need a schematic diagram. I don't need anything. I just need the meter and the leads that can stretch from the battery positive post to the voltage feed going into the load. And my meter will give me the voltage drop reading. The workbook will tell you expect about 0 0.5 volts for most cars, trucks, and big equipment. In some cases, it might be a little bit high, like 0 0.7. It depends on the circuit. But if you do this a few times, you begin to realize that uh, 0 0.79 on this piece of bulldozer equipment is perfectly normal. They're all like that. But you see, if you have an intermittent problem, move the harness, tap on the switches, take the connectors and try to twist them a little bit. And if you find one of those connectors being the problem, when you move it and touch it, this reading is going to jump all over the place and you found that intermittent connection and you're done before your buddy has even had time to pour himself a cup of coffee. Now let's do the same thing on the ground side. Remove the leads, put the test lead on pin two, and I go up here to the battery negative. Oops, let me reverse it. I'm sorry. That it doesn't matter which way do we do it with the digital because it doesn't matter if the reading is backwards. It just has a minus sign. So I put the ground back to the battery negative post. I take the red lead and I touch the ground pin on the load. Now I'm looking at the ground side of the circuit and I'll take that ground strap and I'll move it. And if it starts to cause this reading to fluctuate, you found an intermittent problem on the ground side of the circuit. <clears throat> now I'll tell you something, when you have an intermittent problem, it's a nightmare, right? You've seen them before and you pull your hair out trying to figure out how can I find this intermittent connection. I hit a bump, it acts up, hit another bump, it stops acting up. Well, use this voltmeter voltage drop principle and you can validate every connector on the voltage side and every connector on the ground side and find those poor connections so easily it's almost a crime to charge the customer for fixing his car. Yeah, sure. Okay, now Let's insert a few problems. Let's uh, just get right into it. I'm going to turn the meter back on. I started to take a break, but I decided we'll just keep on going. All right, now, in the uh, kit, when you buy this kit, you're going to get an uh, instructor guide. And the instructor guide will tell you what problem to insert. So when you go to the workbook and say, like, you're going to troubleshoot problem number one in the workbook, you look up the instructor guide and it tells you what problem to put in for problem number one. So the first thing you're going to do is turn the circuit off. You can leave the power pack plugged in. The red and black leads are still connected to the red and black posts, so they're safe. I'm going to turn this over. Now you'll notice on the bottom there's a bunch of these little zero ohm resistors. And there's one here on the top, and I didn't mention it. Uh, why it's a zero ohm resistor. It's nothing more than a jumper wire. Now you know it's a zero ohm resistor because it has a single black band in the center. That tells you it's a wire jumper but it's made to look like a little resistor and we have a couple of them here in different places and uh, you will uh, use these from time to time. Now I want to mention something here if this board is brand new, the first time you pull a zero ohm resistor out, 
please pull straight up and it will fight you. You'll have to pull kind of hard to get it up. I'm going to pull this one out here. See? Now, now once it comes out a couple of times, the pins loosen up and everything works fine. I'm going to insert a carbon resistor into this point. And what I have done is I have created a voltage drop on the voltage side. Now I'm going to turn the circuit on. Look at the lamp. See how the lamp is dim? All right, now that's a dim brake light. You get pulled over by the police for a brake light being too bright, too dim. So therefore, this circuit's got a problem. Now, if that lamp were a DC motor, how would the DC motor be working right now? It would be slow, low RPM. Uh, if that were a solenoid, the solenoid would be sluggish. If that were a relay, the relay might not click. Or if it did click, when it turns on the circuit with the contacts, since the voltage drop is on the contact side, it would affect the circuit that the relay is controlling. So that's what we'll get into when we do the other circuit board trainers later. So here we are. We've got a definite problem. I'm going to measure pin 1. Look at that. I've got 5.25 volts, so I already know that this lamp is dim. This circuit has a problem because I have low B+. Now I'm going to continue on with the ground side just to make sure. And the ground side is still 0.0. .0. Uh, it was a 0 0.03, but it's a 0 0.01 now because there's less current through the circuit. So there's less of a voltage drop due to the lower current flowing through the connections and the wire. So I have B plus problem, voltage side problem, and I'm going to trace it back up the circuit, which you will do with the workbook, taking you up this way, step by step, at each, each of these measurements. I'm still low. I'm still looking for my B plus. Still low. Still low. Still low. Whoops. At test point three, I have my B plus, 12.91. But I go to TP4, and I have low B plus. So there is a voltage drop between TP3 and TP4. That's exactly what would happen in the vehicle. If you went to the ignition switch and measured the voltage coming out of the ignition switch, and you measured at this connector here, and you'd see a drop of about 7 volts. So you'd know there's a bad problem in that portion of the wire harness or the connector on either end. That's troubleshooting. It's easy when you know how. Now let's turn this off. I'm going to remove the problem. By the way, this was a carbon resistor which comes in the resistor bag. You get one of these with every kit. We have a series of resistors and some zero ohm resistors and this is enabling you to do all the problems that uh, are associated with that circuit board. Now you got to put that zero ohm back in again to U3 and I just did that. I bent that lead. Take your time. You got plenty of time here. Okay so everything's back to normal. I removed the bad connection. I checked pin one. My voltage is back to normal again. I fixed the customer circuit and the service advisor is still writing up the ticket. That's how fast it goes once you know how what you're doing. Okay, now let's throw a problem in on the ground side. I'm going to turn the circuit off and this time I'm going to pull out U13. By the way, the jumpers on the bottom are numbered and we call them U jumpers. U is for under the circuit board. Now, while I'm putting problems in to demonstrate, if you're studying this at home, find somebody around you that can put these problems in for you. Anybody can do it. Uh, just 
They know which jumper to pull out because the book, the instructor guide tells them. They insert a resistor in there, like I'm doing. And of course, I'm on camera, so it's not as easy. All right. So I put a resistor in there. Turn it back over. Now you're ready to come back. You didn't look while they did that for you. So you don't know if it's an open circuit or a voltage drop. You turn the circuit on, and ah, the lamp is dim. So I've got a problem in the circuit. Well, is it on the voltage side or the ground side? Let's go to pin 1. Well, I've got good voltage on pin 1, so my uh, voltage side of the circuit apparently is okay. Let me go to the ground side, and oh boy, I've got 7.65 volts on the ground side, and it should be 0 0.03. There's definitely something wrong on the ground side. So I trace out the ground side to go to TP14, still high, and TP10 across the connector, still high, TP11, still high. TP12, the other side of switch S4, 7.63. I go to G101. Aha! Look at that. My sheet metal ground is 7.63. That comes from G100. I go to G100. I'm 0, 0.00. So that ground strap between the engine block and the sheet metal is corroded, causing the voltage drop and it's as simple as that. Turn the circuit off. Remove the resistor from the uh, circuit which created the voltage drop. And I dropped the little zero ohm. Okay, I found the little zero ohm. It fell on the floor. And put that into U13 where it belongs, that zero ohm resistor restores the circuit to normal operation. I confirm normal operation by having B plus on pin 1 and a good B minus on pin 2. So you see this is the kind of troubleshooting that we we do. Uh, there's about 33 pages in the workbook of going through a lot of exercises and then you start troubleshooting a total of 28 problems with open circuits and voltage drops. And that's how you learn how to troubleshoot. You practice, you do it over and over, and you build your confidence up. And no matter what problem we put in the circuit, by following these simple troubleshooting techniques, you identify quickly if it's a voltage side or ground side problem, or possibly even both. So you have to just uh, have a procedure and do some practice and do some troubleshooting and then all of a sudden you realize that you can indeed troubleshoot a circuit. Now we have some other problems besides opens and voltage drops and you're going to see this in the workbook. I'm skipping over some of it. I don't want to spend a lot of time with uh, such detail because you need the, the trainer to actually practice it. I'm going to show you a technique that I find very effective for finding shorts to ground. So I'm going to pause the video for a second here and get set up for that and then we'll pick it up and show you how to use an ohm meter to find a short to ground. Okay we're back and we're going to demonstrate how to use an ohm meter to find a short to ground. Now we all know shorts to ground can be very difficult to track down, especially on some vehicles where you have shorts in the back of the vehicle and you're up in the front of the vehicle or vice versa or uh, just uh, trying to access the cables and connectors. Uh, it's it's awkward at many times. So let me show you how to take an ohm meter and uh, let's see if the circuit has a short or not. First we're going to uh, unplug so I'm going to disconnect the power pack. 
there it is it's unplugged now I can take the red and black wire off and the power pack is safe and I'm going to go back to the ground on the minus bat now if you're doing this on a car what you would actually do is take the red uh, the battery positive cable off the vehicle off the battery so the circuit is sitting here without any voltage anywhere in the circuit I'm going to put the ohm meter on the 200 ohm range and the principle is and you'll read this in the workbook so uh, it'll walk you through it you have four problems short to ground to practice I'm going to close the switch and connect everything together so as if the circuit were on and I'm going to take my fuse and lift the fuse up that simulates the fuse is blown now I'm going to take this ohm meter and it's grounded at minus bat and I'm going to measure the cold side of the fuse and I see 10.6 ohms to ground well that's because the bulbs in the socket I'm going to take the bulb out now look at that the bulb has been removed so the bulb was was connected to the circuit and the ohm meter was reading through the bulb so what you have to do is you have to disconnect the load so now this voltage side of the circuit is sitting here it's not connected at either end the fuse has disconnected it from the the power side and the lamp has been disconnected to remove it from the ground side so the hot side of the circuit is existing now in the vehicle going from the cold side of the fuse I have an uh, indication of high resistance uh, infinity so therefore there's no short to ground now I'm going to put a short to ground on the circuit you're going to see this because you're watching I'm going to make the, sh the uh, socket itself shorted I put a short across the socket now when I go to the now now the fuse is blown so the circuit is actually shorted to ground I go to the cold side of the fuse and I see a low resistance reading so I'm seeing my short to ground with my ohm meter so now I'm going to open the switch okay it went to uh, infinity so therefore the short to ground is not in the switch it's on the other side of the switch alright now I'm going to go to S3 if that were a connector just pull it apart okay so the reading goes back to infinity so the short is on the other side of S3 there it is again and I come down to TP13 and I can take this little zero ohm resistor out in J1 and check there so it's good but when I go on the other side I see a little reading and the only thing left in the circuit is the wire from J1B to pin 1 or the socket itself so there's the problem using an ohm meter trace is short to ground it's quick and it will show you what part of the circuit has the short to ground and which parts of the circuit are not shorted to ground